The annual Euromoney ECBC Cover Bond Congress was held once again in Barcelona this year, attracting over a thousand delegates from a record 38 countries. The positive tone of the conference reflected the prevailing optimism in the cover bond market. Uh, of course, this uh, uh, policy uh, was quite uh, helpful. Uh, we had uh, a very strong compression in, uh, in terms of trade, so uh, we reached a very uh, aggressive level of funding. But there was also a growing awareness that this relied, at least in part, on the ECB's cover bond purchase programme. There was a lot of speculation from delegates about how and when this would come to an end and what its impact would be on the market. Um, I think where we uh, are moving to is just simply the situation uh, where the ECB is go going to taper its purchases and that is going to be a gradual process. Is it going to have a lot of market impact? Is it going to assure the return of a lot of investors? I don't think so because I think in terms of yield mo movements, spread movements, uh, not an awful lot is going to happen during the tapering stage itself. Uh, we think that once the ECB announces tapering and slows the pace of purchase, we will have a bit of a more normalization in terms of um, spreads moves. We think that spreads will move forward, making the relative value a bit more attractive. But an online poll in one of the panels showed that only 8% of delegates thought that the end of the programme was likely to cause a significant sell-off. Of more immediate concern for many delegates was the imminent introduction of a cover bond directive. The man responsible for this, Didier Millereau of the European Commission, gave a keynote speech outlining what we can expect from the directive. There will be uh, a new EU directive, probably containing the, the main bulk of the, of the requirements, and we will also need to look at some very targeted amendments to the CR to uh, introduce adjustments to the, uh, to the prudential uh, framework. One of the key issues will be uh, whether and to what extent we look at the type of assets which uh, cover bonds can contain. Um, there may be also isu issues around the, uh, the way the covered pools are composed, ensuring maybe uh, requiring maybe some level of homogeneity in the way those covered bond pools are composed. Obviously, Avoid. we'll need to look at uh, the, the market developments, the recent market innovation, and the issue of maturity extensions, the soft bullets, hard bullets, and so on. There is the issue of liquidity buffer, ensuring that there is as much matching as possible between uh, assets and liabilities. What do you do in case this is not the case? Uh, we're going to look at that. And when the Commission will publish its proposals. We are to be uh, transparent with you under pressure to produce that proposal as quickly as possible. Uh, but we'll see whether this will be possible. But Q1 2018 is really the, uh, uh, a serious target date. And by the Responding way to this, the Rapporteur for the European Parliament, Bernd Luca, explained Parliament's role in the process and their views on the product. Um, the Commission has the right of initiative and we have heard uh, Mr. Millerow this morning outline some of the thoughts the Commission is developing on a legislative uh, proposal, but the decisions are then being taken by the Parliament. Um, and so when I speak to you today, then I will basically represent uh, the views of the Parliament in the sense that this is what the majority has agreed on views of the Parliament on covered bonds can basically be summarized in three points. We view covered bonds as convenient and efficient uh, debt instruments for the issuing institutions. Second, we find that these are debt instruments which are reliable assets for investors, in particular for financial institutions. And third, as Mr. Millerow has already um, emphasized uh, as well this morning, we think that CB markets work well under the mostly national legislation that we currently have, that there is a great degree of cross-border investment. Unlike the Commission, we do not see evidence of market uh, fragmentation, but we see a healthy product diversity which should be maintained. A series of roundtables throughout the day discussed many of the more challenging aspects of cover bond harmonisation and reported back to the conference in the final panel. Another theme that was discussed in several workshops and panels was the growth of cover bonds in new jurisdictions. The strategic importance of covered bonds as a long-term funding tool is now recognised at the global level. 
Several countries outside Europe have recently implemented COVID bond frameworks, while many others are either in the process of adopting new legislation or are looking at introducing COVID bond framework. Uh, well, we just got the uh, secondary legislation passed uh, two, two weeks ago by the Central Bank and National Monetary Council in Brazil. So um, we think that a few minor adjustments until the end of this year and uh, we might have uh, maybe an issue uh, sometime uh, second half of next year. And cover bonds became such a trend right now mm. that everyone, whatever you're going to go, whether it's Armenia, Azerbaijan or, or somewhere in Europe, uh, everyone talks about cover bonds. Not everyone fully understands maybe what the benefits are uh, and what actually size you have to have of the market, mortgage market, mm. to really make this instrument successful. The globalization of the product bodes well for the Euromoney ECBC cover bond conferences in Singapore and Vancouver in 2018. To find out more, visit euromoneyconferences.com.